Bella, the Maker Mama Boss Lady behind Fiverr and Fox, and this is episode 44, I think, of my podcast. It's been a while. I don't think I've podcasted in about a month, so bear with me if things are a tad bit rocky this time. Uh, I think last time I talked to you was either the week of Thanksgiving or really close to Thanksgiving, and it's now, um, I think you're seeing this on New Year's Eve 2021. So. I've got a bit to catch you up on. Uh, everything you need to know about me is going to be linked down below the video. Um, there's a blog post with uh, show notes and all the links to things that I'm going to be talking about, patterns and yarns and whatnot, um, and also links to my Instagram and my Ravelry shops, Etsy shop, all, all those things linked down below uh, if you need to know anything else about me. Let's see. I don't think I have anything super admin-y. Um, I have several patterns that are gonna be coming out in January, so I'll talk about that in a second. Um, this is gonna be the last podcast for 2021, and we're going into 2022 um, with new goals and kind of just, I don't know, a new perspective on my business, I think. Uh, I, I don't usually do a recap, or the last couple of years I've done a recap of like that year's like accomplishments and then going into the next year goals. I don't know schedule wise, like posting schedule wise, if that's going to happen in January, just because I have patterns and other content that's going to be coming out. Um, maybe I'll do one of those, uh, but I'm definitely going to do the box of socks. Uh, I did that last year and I think I'm up to like 15 or so pairs this year. Um, and that was a super fun and popular video. So I'm going to be doing another recap of all the socks I knit in 2021. So that's coming soon. I'm trying to remember when I last talked to you. I know it was like end of November. And like I said, it's the end of December now. Um, I had already committed to not doing Vlogmas. I remember talking about that with you. Um, just not something that works for our family. Uh, so I kind of kind of went dark on you in December for a couple reasons. Just knowing that people are watching Vlogmas, it's not a great time to post like full length podcasts because people are Vlogmasing. Um, so for that reason, we also got really sick, uh, a stomach bug, not that other thing. Um, a stomach bug after Thanksgiving. And then leading up to Christmas, I hope you had a wonderful one. We did. Um, leading up to Christmas, there was a death in my husband's family and it was a lot both schedule wise and just emotionally and all of that. Um, so just wasn't in the mood for podcasting. Um, wasn't, I don't even know if I, I, I didn't do a ton of making, honestly, not a ton of making got done. Um, but we did do a lot of Christmas crafting and Christmas baking and gift making and the stuff that I wanted to focus on in December. Um, I, I had kind of been in between like, do I want to push for the patterns to get out in December and like really end the year out big on a like accomplishment and financial way um, or to just step back for December. And I, I went with step back and I'm glad that I did because it ended up being a really good month to just focus on, you know, making cookies and stuff like that instead. Um, so that I think is where we left off and that's everything I need to update you on admin wise. So let's get into the rest of the podcast. Usually right before I talk about designs, I talk about what I'm wearing. Um, <laughs> what I am wearing, am I a fraud? I feel like a fraud. <laughs> this is not a handmade sweater. This is my mom bought for me um, for Christmas and it's like, you know, that chenille velvet type yarn. Definitely something I could make. It's just like a broken rib knit sweater, raglan. Um, it's very cozy, but like, I feel super weird wearing it. It's really cute. It's like cropped and I don't, these always, these never wash well. They don't wear well long-term, this yarn. Um, it's definitely not natural at all, but it's cozy and warm. Um, and also I put it on just for podcasting. I've been wearing a hoodie all day and I'm wearing leggings and they don't really work with the crop of the sweater. So it's real. it's not a great outfit. So I'm just all kind of fraudulent over here. But um, yeah, both me and my husband agree. Like I was wearing it yesterday or something and he was like I just I just feel weird about you in that sweater <laughs> like you just tell it's a storm made sweater and I don't know how to feel about that it's like yeah you get it I don't either um so yeah no nothing to talk about <laughs> on what I'm wearing although it does in construction a lot remind me of I don't think that one's broken rib I think that one's fisherman's rib or half fisherman's rib or something which I've never done it's like fake brioche or something maybe um I don't know what I'm talking about the new one from Andrew Mowry I think it's called the birch or birch wood or birch something pullover. It's a raglan with like a half turtleneck, mock turtleneck situation. Um, and I kind of want to make one of those, but I also kind of want to dye my own yarn for it. Naturally dyed, maybe. So that might be coming. It's sounding very wet and slushy outside. 
as if it is raining. I think I can hear my gutters and maybe people driving on the road. So if you're hearing any weird water noises, I apologize for that. Let's talk about designs. I don't have anything new to show you. Um, you've seen all of these if you've been following along before. Something just fell over. If you have been following along before with me, um, you've seen these, but I want to reiterate because it's been, it's always a challenge trying to pattern test any fingering weight pattern, um, size inclusive because it, it takes a long time to make. And I try to give like an eight to 10 week timeline to be very um, accommodating of all the sizes and the fact that it's fingering weight. It just takes a long time. Um, and not everybody is, you know, a full-time crochet or whatever. So it takes a long time to test the patterns. It takes a long time for me to write these patterns. So I think I started working on this design in August. Um, it's been in my mind for a super long time, but I think, I think August is when I like started writing it up. Um, so the Fields Cardigan. <laughs> It's going to be hard to show you. I'll put in some pictures in a minute. But the Fields cardigan, this hanger is not wide enough for this sweater. Cardigan, this is like a baby hanger. Um, yes, Fields cardigan. Hi. Um, you get the gist of that. It's coming out January 7th is currently the date as long as everything goes to plan. Um, it got set back a little bit. Again, I was like, I could push it out before the end of the year, but I had testers who were still sort of finishing up and I try to always be gracious when stuff comes up like health wise or otherwise for people to not be like, you must finish my pattern because obviously there are much more important things in life than pattern testing. Um, so I, I think January 7th is what we're doing. If that changes, keep an eye out on Instagram. I will update you but I have made two of these for myself. This is the original one. This is in Life in the Long Grass yarn. The colorway is Gorse and it is on whatever the 7525 sock base is. It's showing up a little more green here, um, but it's like a mustardy yellow with really pretty like black flecks through it. And this is a yarn that I've been holding onto for several years. My parents brought it back from London um, for me and I had intended to design a cardigan with it and I'm I'm just thrilled that I finally did it because it, it is a crocheted cardigan and it has a very knit look to it and a very like grandpa style and really cozy but still like you can dress it up um so it's not like I don't know you could definitely hang around a house in it but I feel like it's a little it's a fancy it's a fancy grandpa I feel like that was the title of a podcast already <laughs> but yes and then this uh contrast edge which is optional if you want to do it two colors or not um is fiber for the people in the colorway leather um, and this pattern is going to be coming out the seventh, like I said, and it runs from women's extra small up to four X. Um, and I've had all those sizes tested and testing run really well. Um, other than like the bumps in the road for people's like personal lives, the like math and the sizing and the fit and everything run really, really well. And a lot of awesome colors and stuff. I always, when I do release a pattern, do a pattern drop video. So you can keep an eye out for that here. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Um, and I usually give like inspiration, tester photos, so you can see it on different people and body shapes, um, color inspiration, and sometimes a coupon code. So like and subscribe. This is the first one I made. Um, this one is super wash, which I, I don't know. I wanted to get away. I still, I still do want to get away from using super wash yarns as much. I'm, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. Just sit over there for now. Superwash yarns. Um, Superwash, if you're not familiar, it's yarn that's, it's basically like plastic coated. Um, it doesn't felt, doesn't shrink, um, but it also doesn't breathe like wool does. And I'm a pretty crunchy lady. Um, I do have very sensitive skin. So there's a lot, like I can't do the wooly wool as much as I want to do like yarn that just like came off a sheep from down the road. I can't, I'm very, very, very sensitive. Um, but I can do like Merino and I'm trying to figure out other breeds and um, combinations that work for me in a non super wash. And one that I tried was for the second Fields cardigan, I had gift cards and such and wanted to get a full fiber for the people quantities of set. Yep. Fiber for the people in the colorway Chili. She did this guide to order for me and this is her 85 or 80 fine merino wool and 20% nylon base so it does still have nylon on it it's not like entirely um you know natural fibers or you know non-synthetic fibers but I made a second one. Oh, I love it there's a feather I love this one so much um this yarn was a little denser than the other one um but knowing that the pattern already fit me and all the math was good and whatever I wasn't super worried about meeting my gauge exactly um, cause you know, I'm a designer and I can do whatever I want. So this one's a little, just ever so slightly denser. Look at that beautiful color. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that beautiful stitch. Look at this beautiful sweater. 
Look at these buttons. Look at it all. I love it. Um, so this is just the same, same sweater. Mine's a medium, if that um, does anything for anybody. Uh, but yes, I tried this, this yarn base, and I'm absolutely obsessed with the color. No regrets on the color whatsoever. But I have noticed that this yarn, um, it pills a ton and it felt it in the armpits. Um, and I know that's to be expected and I'm not trying to speak badly of the yarn, but I, I know that some um, like plies and staple lengths and whatnot w are more prone to pilling. Um, this is very soft, it's fine merino, which I think is contributing to the issue. Um, I don't know if I can show you the pill level. Can we see the pills? Like, there's just a lot. I, th I think you can see, hopefully, I'm not just showing you nothing here like here. It's very hard to show. Fuzz on a sweater. Yeah. Very pilly. I have gone over it multiple times. Oh, I can't reach it. It's up. Nope, can't show you. Where is it? A little black. That guy. Up there. I've talked about it on here before. Now the camera angle is going to be all catawampus. Why did you do that, Isabella? Um... <laughs> talked about that before. Uh, it's by Molly Suds and it is a recycled glass like pumice stone for taking fuzzies off of sweaters. It works great. I really like it. I was iffy on it at first but I really like that it's recycled and it works really well. Um, and it doesn't require batteries or plugging in or anything so it's portable and fantastic. But um, even with multiple instances of defuzzing this is just ever so pilly. With just, nor just normal wear. I'm not like chopping wood in it or anything. I went to like Christmas dinner. Cat, you can't come in. You can't. Um, and I try to, when I'm wearing non-super wash things, make sure that I'm not wearing it directly on my skin, particularly my armpits, because I'm a sweaty lady. <laughs> um, I had this on with a, like I had a dress on underneath and it had sheer sleeves and apparently the sheer was not enough to contain my sweaty armpits. So the armpit felt in, which is, I don't know if you can see, yeah ever so like it's denser there so it felt in um because it's you know wool and i've never had that happen before in a sweater but again i'm just starting to get out of the superwash and all of that so i just i have mixed feelings on this it was definitely a splurge of a sweater quantity even with the gift cards or whatever like it's it's pricey um and i love taylor's yarn and i'm absolutely obsessed with this color and i thought this was going to be new this was going to be my new favorite base because it's super cozy Do you hear my cat and my husband calling my cat? This is our snuggle time. Princess is mad. But yeah, there's just so many pillies. And I don't know. Come on, look at the pills. Look at them. I don't know if and when it will decide to stop pilling. Like if I keep pumicing or whatever, if it's going to stop the pilling. Um, well, yeah, that's just my experience. I've worn it three or four times maybe at this point. We did Christmas photos in it and worked for Christmas and I've worn it a couple other, maybe less than 10 times at this point for sure. Um, so I'm hoping at some point it just stops pilling, but I'm also like deeply concerned about this like felting armpit situation. So that is just my thoughts on my red hot chili sweater, um, Fields Guardian. But yeah, I need to get pictures in this one before it's like totally pilled out of its mind. Um, but I have all the pictures in the yellow one and pattern drop video will be coming hopefully in the next week or so. So stay tuned for that. And then also on the design front, let me get this out of here. Sit down there. Also on the design front, the Through the Rain Cowl, this one's been folded, so it has a crease in the middle of it, if you can see that. Um, through the Rain Cowl, which is made to use um, seven mini skeins and a solid main color and fingering weight yarn. It would be great if you had an advent calendar or any scrap yarns. Um, this would be a fantastic pattern to use with it. This is the adult size cowl. This is the toddler size. And there is also a child size. Um, and depending on your color combo, you can, testers did more yarns, less yarns. Um, you can also use a gradient cake. I made one for my mom that I used one main color and then a gradient. Um, or you could do just two solid colors, whatever. There's a lot of options and it's fun to uh, mix in scraps and whatnot. Once you get the stitch pattern going, like, it's a really, really cool, it's kind of blown out. Really, really cool stitch pattern. Um, kind of mystifying, but it's super simple. 
super simple, just really cool looking. Um, and I'm very excited about this pattern and people have requested fingerless mitts. I don't know if I'm going to get to that this winter season. Maybe that will be the fall. I don't know, but through the rain cowl, it's coming as well. Um, probably January 21st. I still haven't gotten that one out to my tech editor. I was waiting to get the fields carding in back at that launched probably January 21st, January something. Cause I want to get it out before, you know, winter is over in the area in which I live. So those are the designs. I don't have anything else on the hooks right now. I have a couple things back there that could be designs, um, but I want to get these out. It's always annoying when I like do my final count for the year of like how many patterns I released. Like I clearly did all the work for these in 2021, but they're going to be released in 2022. So I never quite know how to count those. Like, do I count that as two pattern releases for 2022, even though I did not much. I <laughs> spent like four months in 2021 working on it. Um, the cardigan, not the cowl, but yeah. Uh, I guess as long as I'm releasing patterns, that all that, that's all that matters. This is my business. I can do whatever I want. And that's my design section. Finished objects. I have two sets of finished objects or two, whatever. I have finished objects. <laughs> um, this is, we talked about it last time. Ooh, that looks fun with the sweater. I like that combo. It's a good color combination. This is the a modified version of the Seismic Beanie um, by White Owl Crochet Co. It is a twisted rib beanie and I made it out of a a ball, a donut, a, a quantity of Clinton Hill cashmere that I was gifted. If you want to hear more about this saga, you can go back to the previous episode, but basically it seems like my ball may have been damaged by something or another, um, be it the factory or moths or box cutters, or I don't know what, don't know what went wrong because everybody else speaks very highly of this yarn, but um, mine in the first like quarter of the, the ball, little donut orb thing, um, 50, 50 gram amount, there were five or more breaks and like two knots. Um, so I don't know what happened with the yarn, but it, it suffered some grievances for sure. And I got it done, but there was a lot more end sewing in than I had, you know, opted for with a single ball hat. Um, not a yarn that I would purchase for myself. Um, again, I like it, but those super soft fibers, like a fine merino or a cashmere, they're gonna pill. So this isn't as bad as the merino sweater, but. Yeah, you can't really see that as much, but it's definitely got a, a worn in look and I've only been wearing it a couple times again, less than 10 times. Um, I really, maybe I'll wear it with my sweater. It kind of looks cute. I'm not super a hat person, um, but like, no, I'm not gonna leave it on. It's too much for me. I never know what to do. Like, where does it go on my forehead? Like, I don't like my forehead, so I don't wanna wear it like a slouchy. Opinions? I liked it better when I had bangs but I don't like hats when I have glasses on, which is what I normally wear um, when I'm not in my house. So they like stick out weird. I, I don't know. And I was hoping I could like, I can brim it, but then my ears are out. I don't ever wear hats like this. You guys are just getting my stream of consci consciousness on hats right now. Is this the thing? I don't know. Um, but I love the fit. I basically, I followed I combined a free pattern that they had given me when I was gifted the yarn um, from Clinton Hill, but I didn't like that hat, but I used the cast on numbers and then I followed the like stitch motif and decreases from the seismic beanie, which I had made before for my daughter, but it's um, it was in a different weight yarn. So it's got, it's this inside out? Was I just wearing that inside? <laughs> I was wearing it inside out. <laughs> I wanted to show you that I did the decreases correctly. I figured it out. Um, if you remember, I made one for my daughter for her birthday and I did them wrong. Um, and I was originally a tester for this pattern, um, the real size McBeanie. And I remember making the same mistake when I was testing, like I misunderstood something in the phrasing of the decreases. I forget exactly what it was. Um, but I ended up going back through my Instagram, like DMs to the test, like thread and scrolling through back to where I was like, what is wrong with my hat? Help me, Molly. Um, and they talked me through it and I was literally making the same mistake again. So now it has that nice like folded box top, um, which I think fits really nice and looks really cool. Like I love how all the little, um, like these lines are horizontal and those are what is it, vertical? <laughs> I was gonna say parallel, I guess. Um, 
Yes, so I really like this, but not a hat, not a type of yarn I would buy for myself. It's very pricey and I'm not like super thrilled with the, it's like wicked soft, but quality wise, I don't know if it's worth 50 grams for a little itty bitty blob of yarn ever. It kind of seems just like a silly luxury thing to me, but I was gifted it and it's cozy and I'm gonna wear it. It looks good with my eyes, it looks good with my coat. And apparently it looks good with this sweater. So now we know. And then another, oh, it's, been a, it's been a rough month on the knitting guys. I just have a whole bunch of projects that have not gone to play. So I think last time when I talked to you, I took, cat. She's so angry. <laughs> when I talked to you last, I think I talked about how I was gonna do an advent project with my daughter where I was gonna let her pull um, little bits of yarn every day to make the 24 day socks by Potter in Bloom, which is an advent um, sock pattern. And we did that sort of. So I cast on the socks. Um, the pattern, which this is at no fault of the pattern. I love Emma's patterns and socks partic in particular. Um, but it was written for one size and it was a 64 stitch, stitch count, which I know is usually too big on my feet. And it, unless it's like a really ribbed, ribbed, like knit one purl one sock, it's going to be too big for me. Um, so I use my normal needle size. I use my normal yarn. And I was like, I'm going to go down to 50. I think I had to go down to 56 stitches. Yes, 56 stitches. Normally I go down to 60, but I was like, it's not, it's like a slip stitch with a little bit of garter. So not like a tight fitting sock, which normally would work fine for me. Um, I've done that before with slip stitch, 56 fits me. And sometimes I leave like 60 in the foot because my foot is a little bit wider, but la di da, it all, it's usually fine. Um, but for these, so these, well, I'll show you the top bit because I modified the, the bottom bit. This is the pattern in the, I need to block them, but um, they don't fit on my sock blockers as you're soon going to find out. Uh, so 24 day socks, it's meant to be 24 bits of yarn either from advent calendar, although it seems silly to use like a gram of yarn per uh, 20 gram mini, but it's got a little slip, I'm gonna keep showing you, sorry. A little slip stitch, doodad, and some garter and some straps. Really cute. So I did 56 stitches, didn't try them on because normally that would work fine for me. But what I was doing as I was uh, making these is <laughs> catching all of the ends. Holy moly, that's a lot of ends. Um, these are all caught in like sewn in already. Um, I don't know, it's not like weaving it. They call it weaving in as you go, but I wasn't weaving them in. I was like doing a, almost like a color work, like catching type technique that secures the yarn end so you can just cut them all when you're done. Worked great. Um, they're nice and secure. But also because the way I was carrying the yarn with the other stitches, it tightened up the back of the sock, or I guess the side of the sock. There is a jog on the side where the stripes meet. That's just how knitting works. Um, but because, yeah, I have like this much of the back of a sock, where I was catching the yarn for each stripe, it tightened them up substantially and I cannot get them over my foot. So I was like, okay, um, they're kind of too big. And I didn't notice this until I got into the foot because I was like, it normally fits me. I didn't bother trying it on. My daughter was picking colors. We were having a great time. <sighs> so once I got the giant heel flap that I usually do for myself, I usually do like a men's large heel flap because um, I have really high arches and that works best for me, heel flap and gusset. After I did that, I realized it didn't fit over my foot. So at that point I was like, I can't really make it for my daughter because the heel flap is ginormous. So I made like a mystery youth size sock. Um, doesn't fit me in width or length. Um, so it maybe will fit my daughter in a year or two. Um, I did modify the foot instead of doing the, camera, okay, you're kind of, kind of on the struggle bus here too. Um, instead of doing the gartery bit or the, the pearl ridge, I just did straight knit on the foot of the sock, which I like better, honestly. Um, I'm. Some people do garter things and they look really beautiful, but I feel like my garter is just ugly. Um, <laughs> my pearls are ugly, so I kind of like this better. So I did that for the foot. Um, I made the sock smaller. And then somehow, like, I don't know if I should have checked gauge. Normally when I make Emma socks, they're totally fine. But I ended up doing, for not my length of foot, I think I had lengthened the leg part. Maybe that's why. Ended up with a 32 day sock, 32 stripes instead of 24. 
So just, just all around, I just really, really messed up these socks. And then <laughs> the jog, I was like, it's fine. The jog, which I remember Emma talking about, the jog will just run down the inside of my leg, except that would require me making two opposite socks so that it would be mirrored on the inside of my leg. Instead, I made two same socks. So one's going to be on the inside of my leg and one's going to be running down the outside of my other leg. Seams, jogs, joins. Um, I definitely, there's, there's hair knitted into this sock. <sighs> so they're super cute. I can't fit them on my bloggers. They don't fit me. I love them. And I'm going to put them in my box of socks just so they're like in my line of vision on the regular. Because if I put them away in like an attic or something, I'm going to forget about them and my daughter will never wear them. And if I put them in with her socks now, it's going to be daily like, do these socks fit me? Yeah, I'm going to wear these socks. They don't fit in my shoes. Do they fit me now? <laughs> So I can't handle that either. So I'm gonna put them in with my socks, not wear them, and then hopefully, I don't think they're gonna fit her by next Christmas because she is three and this is a probably like six year old size sock. I don't know. I don't know what size feet people have, but they're not my size and they're not her size. So we're gonna just keep them. And I thought about frogging them. You're gonna be like, why didn't you just frog the socks and start again, Bella? Because I had all these little stripey bits that were smaller it seemed a waste to frog them and then create either myself more ends or throw away these bits and start again. So they're really cute. Random drawn. I would love to do advent socks again next year, but I'm going to do probably just vanilla socks with wider stripes rather than the, like two rows of each color um, and patterning and, you know, not fitting. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that better next year. Those are supposed to be my 2021 like commemorative projects I made socks, but Alas, it has been a month. This is kind of a finished object. I wasn't sure to put it in whips or finished objects, so I'll show it to you now. But this is a finished bulk of an object. This is a modified dandelion drops wall hanging, which is one of my patterns. It's got my dandelion stitch in it, which I use in several of my patterns now. It's a reoccurring situation. Um, those are just ends that are going to go, but there's going to be fringe that hangs down um, and it's going to be mounted on a branch. Um, so it's wall hanging. I will link the pattern drop video so you can get a better idea what I'm talking about. But I basically I changed the stitch count a little bit, made it slightly larger and the original pattern is written for one color, but it's super easy to again change into stripes. Um, the original pattern is like a DK light worsted. This is a acrylic um, and originally I made it in a cotton. So like the drape was different, but this is acrylic scraps and bits of randomness um, that I had collected. I think I went out and bought the yellow because I didn't have enough yellow, but um, random acrylic stuff. And it's going to be for my daughter's room because she's kind of got this sort of a rainbowy color scheme going on. Uh, so I need to mount that. I have a white or a silver birch stick that I'm going to mount it on. And then I got to do all the fringe, which is really the most tedious part. I think I made this in like two days. And then the fringe it doesn't take long to make the fringe, but trimming the fringe to like a length that is like even and satisfying for me <laughs> um, is tedious. And it's going to be even more tedious because I'm going to be doing stripes for the fringe. So it's, it's going to be lovely. Um, but yeah. I need to get it done. I thought about doing it as a Christmas present for her, but I was like, what, what three-year-old really wants a wall hanging as a Christmas present? So I was like, whatever, I'll give it to her. Give it to her when I give it to her. It's really more for me than it is for her. I don't know how much enjoyment she's going to get out of a wall hanging, but I thought it would look nice in her room. So that is my mostly finished-ish object. So the whips have also been a struggle, a whole situation, conundrum. I have been wanting to make a pair of fingerless mittens for a little bit. I have some older ones that are... Uh, I think I may have crochet and knit ones, but they're acrylic, they're stretched out, they're pilly, and they're not, um, you know, up to my standard now. So I've been wanting to try some, um, either that have like a fold over little mitten thing, because you know, this is visually helping you. <laughs> a mitten thing or a cup that unfolds to cover most of your fingers, but I can fold it down because I like to have like full grip when I'm driving. Um, the visuals, I know, I'm helping you. So I wanted to do fingerless mittens and I've never cabled anything before. I wanted to try cables, just like simple. I don't want to do like a full cable sweater or anything, but I would like to know how to do cables to like put a cable up in front of a cardigan or um, a hat or something. So I, I've like hyped up cables for a long time. So I wanted to do it. I had my eyes on a pattern by Fiber Tails. Um, I think it came out last year. So um, I believe it's pronounced Yedra. 
Uh, it's Spanish for Ivy. She is a Finnish designer. Denmark. From Denmark, I believe. Um, but she speaks a whole bunch of languages, um, one of them being Spanish. So she has this mitt pattern and it's a fingerless mitten, but it has a long cuff so you can like roll it up. So just like your little fingertips are peeking out or you can cuff it down so you know you have full fingers to do things. Um, <laughs> I'm just describing things really well. I had gotten all the way up to the thumb gusset. Well, first I had to cast on like three or four times because I was doing for the first time a tubular cast on um, and there's a pattern or a tutorial link included in the pattern. It's not her own tutorial, it's another YouTube video. But that one didn't make sense to me at first because um, the way I do long tail cast on, I don't I don't know what the method is called. It is a version of long tail, but it's not the like over the these two fingers thing that everybody else does that looks like a lasso. Um, it's how my grandmother taught me and my mom does it the same way. And I don't know if, what it's called or if it's a different version or just something entirely different, um, but I haven't been able to find it. Um, and I can't explain it to you without having knitting in my hands. So yes learning the tubular cast on based on doing long tail cast on and then some other things was a lot for me to wrap my head around so i looked up other videos and i tried to do like a crochet tubular cast on which is a very pink knits tutorial which made sense to me but then didn't work with like the pattern um as it was written or something i don't know what i was doing i have no idea what i'm talking about but it, i frogged it so many times and i was like messaging hannah uh, um from a corner of craft because she had posted her vlogmas that she was making them and i was like this is a lot for me. <laughs> so she was helpful and I sorted it out. I uh, got it cast on. It's tubular -y, I guess. Totally tubular. Um, but it's a, it's got like a, a leafy pattern up the middle. Yeah, you can see that. So that's a cable bit. And I wasn't having any problem following the cable itself. Um, and then there's like this little, where these stitch markers are on the side, there's going to be dropping those two stitches down later and doing some sort of crocheted braid up the side. It's really pretty. Um, I'll put it, I'll put in a picture here of what the mitts actually look like because this is not giving you a lot of hope. But I had gotten all the way up to like here um, and started doing the gusset. And I should have put it, this time I'm gonna do a lifeline when I get there um, because I messed up something stitch count wise and didn't know how to like save it with the cabling. <laughs> so I like tried to rip back and I tried to like pick up and like rip back and I tried to like add a few stitches to it. It was a mess. So I just recast on the whole thing. And that was weeks ago before Christmas and I kind of just haven't, haven't done anything since. So this is my fingerless mitten. It's a cuff and two repeats of a cable. Um, but it was looking good up until that point. And the gusset's really the only complicated part because you like do the repeat up to that and then I think you do like one or two more and then you do a bunch of ribbing and that's it. Not a complicated pattern and Hannah from Corner Craft was doing it in like, I think she did it in like two days or something, like the full pattern. I don't know if I have the ball band for this, but it is, where did this ball band go? Why don't I have you? Oh, what are you? Cascade 220, I think, in some greenish color. It was left over. I made my brother a hat and a cowl last year for Christmas. It's got a little bit of blue and yellow, like, variation in it and it is super wash I think um, but yeah the goal is to get these mittens done I had thought that it would match like it doesn't match but we're just going with like my coat is green my hat is green my mitts are green I'm just I'm embracing it, it makes my eyes look good whatever um, but yeah and the back is just like garter again which I think my garter is just the ugliest thing um, but yeah I really need, I just need to sit down and finish these because I do want them for winter so Maybe now that Christmas is over and everything else that was going on um, in our personal lives, I will focus on those now. But instead, <laughs> instead of focusing on what I already had, I was like, I'm gonna cast on one more pair of socks before 2021 is over. I had gotten the skein from White Birch. I had never heard of them before. White Birch Fiber Arts. When I went to, this ball band is super shiny. White Birch Fiber Arts. When I went to the New England, Fiber Festival of New England, did I get it right this time? Maybe not. It was my last video. There's a vlog. Um, and this is what the colorway name is. And I, I really, I don't know about this colorway name. It kind of makes me cringe. Um, which I didn't realize it was the name when I bought it. I don't know what it means. It's like my butt look big. I don't, I don't know. But I don't like that name. <laughs> but it's 80 Superwash Merino and 20 Nylon. 
and it's a two ply which is you know whatever for socks but it's a self striping and it is fabulous and I love it Woo! look at it just look at that fabulous um so I just cast on 60 stitches US size one needles and in the rainbow bits I am doing a knit three slip one one row and then just knit the next round so it creates that little ridge and I'm slipping knit wise which makes the um, little ridge of slip stitches twisted like a twisted um, knit stitch so they stick out nicely I'm not doing it on the black part because I could barely see it um, so I'm it's kind of you know poofs out on that part but I think once it's on my leg it'll be fine um, so I split the 100 gram skein into 250 grams um, although I think this one is gonna go red to purple and this one's gonna go purple to red as you can see it's knitting that way um, I think I should have wound this one back so that the stripes would be going that way I may do the other sock reversed or I may fl I don't know uh, I thought I was so clever how I caked those off together but I should have wound this one back so that they would have been the same I think or I should have center pulled it but I hate center pulling um, so I'm gonna use most all I don't know if I'm gonna use all of it we'll see it's gonna be really long but I'm making some socks and I started this last night, so it's it's flying as self-striping yarn does. This is the first time I've used an indie dyed self-striping. Um, it's a splurge purchase for sure, but um, not only are you an indie dyer, but you are doing all the math to make these exact stripes happen. So you charge whatever you want, you, you deserve it. Oh, I messed up there. That's looking sketchy. Oh, well, <laughs> um, yes, but they're super fun and super colorful. And they had the same like sequence of rainbow and like a lighter gray yarn. It's in my vlog video if you want to see it. But these just make me really happy and it feels like a good way to close out 2021. So I'm gonna make these. I don't know if I'm gonna get both pairs or both both socks done because today is Monday. You're seeing this video on Friday, which will be New Year's Eve. So I have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to make two socks super long. Probably not gonna happen, but I'm probably gonna still count it in my 2021 socks. I will have made 14 and a half socks. Um, but yeah, that is my whips. Do I have acquirings? I have a couple. Acquirings, we have a couple Christmassy bits and bobs, I suppose. Um, these are from my friend Emily, who is a rambling yarn on YouTube and Instagram. Um, I don't, I'm not familiar with Karen's Hobby Room. Um, Karen's Hobby Room .com. I'm assuming she's on Instagram somewhere. I didn't look. It doesn't say on this tag, but she got me these. They're little, literal light bulb stitch markers because um, they're shaped like light bulbs. And they're the ones that have the, hang on, they're just, they're just sliding all about here. This one's my favorite one. They're the ones that are round, so you can use them as a progress keeper or you could put it on a knitting needle and it's going to slide really nicely because it's got the rounded clasp, which I really like. I don't have any like that. This little kitty in the boat is my favorite. And they're really thick. They almost feel like a thick ceramic, but they're on a, it's metal. Um, so I really like these. I don't know anything about Karen and her hobby room, but um, I'm really glad Em picked these out for me because they are super cute. There, I'm gonna try to show them all to you. There's a little kitty with a little light bulb, whatever the inside of a light bulb is called on top of her. There is a fish in a fish bowl, light bulb. A fish light bulb. And then there's three teacup ones. There is a little blue kitty swimming in a gardeny looking teacup. There is a little black kitty like my two kitties in a floral teacup. So cute. And then this. I'm sorry if this is the jangliest thing. I'll cut the sound if I have to calico-ish looking kitty in a blue and white teacup. So super cute. Love those. Um, they're really nice weight and really pretty. And thanks, Em. <laughs> she also got me. We just, she's like, this is probably never going to see the light of day, but I thought you would appreciate it because it's kind of an ongoing, it pains me every time I have to say it kind of thing. Um, you'll, you'll know when you see, but like I wish someone had named yarn weights something else that I didn't have to say constantly. Yes. I showed Jojo and he's like, do they know what they're doing? And I was like, oh yeah, they know. Um, so this is by 
get get knit faced ink co yes that on the bottom there but yeah that's going on a project bag that i'm not gonna bring places because people don't understand and i feel like like i don't know i try to call yarns the right thing because there, there's so many names that like People get confused when you say like sock weight yarn and I know four ply is like the UK and maybe Europe, um, but pretty much all, everywhere else it's fingering weight yarn and I just I hate saying it so much. <sighs> and I swear I get targeted internet ads that think that I'm talking about, not yarn. And I'm like, why are these in my feed? I don't want this. And it's because I talk about yarn all the time, guys. It's a trouble. <sighs> yeah, Emily thinks it's funny. So <laughs> that's a pin I have now. I have a pin like plaque wall flag thing. I'll probably put it up on there. I don't really put pins on bags because I lose them all the time. And I don't really bring my bags anywhere other than to my mom's house. So um, yeah, I'll probably put that up. And then so it was some, I guess it was a Christmas gift. I'm not really sure what it was. But Jojo's grandma was up um, from Florida and at one point, I don't think she's still making them, but at one point in her life she did basket making. Um, and she is like trip by trip, as suitcases allow, um, bringing me like all of her handmade baskets, which is really awesome. Cause I know she's given a bunch to other people and she's one of those people like she really doesn't like it if when her gifts aren't like appreciated and used, like she wants you to be using them on the regular which you know if you're giving gifts everybody wants that but um yeah she <laughs> this one's really big i've gotten a bunch of small ones you can't see them but there's a bunch in the shelves underneath there and then there's like a giant plate one up there that i'd use for photos sometimes i think i have this might be my fifth one at this point but every time she comes up she like brings me another one and she was like i just don't want someone to sell them for two dollars when i die at a tag sale <laughs> I'd rather you have them. So, thank you. She knows I appreciate handmade and they're all a little quirky and different. I don't know what this style one is called. Usually she tells me a little bit about it, but it's got green on the inside and then whatever is going on there, stripes and yeah, they're well made and sturdy and she knows I'm gonna put yarn in them and use them for pictures and stuff. So I'm gonna do that. So thanks, Grandma Pat. And I think that's, that's it. We're going to have to end the episode there. Uh, I will see you in 2022, I guess. You know, dad jokes, see you next year and all that. Um, yeah, be on the lookout for the pattern drop for the Fields cardigan, as well as for the upcoming Through the Rain cowl and the Box of Socks video. Maybe a year recap. I don't know. We'll see if I get crazy and do four videos in January. Um, but yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sticking it out with me, even though I took a little break on you. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, all of that season and that you are healthy and well and that you got to be with family and hug them and really just enjoy your life. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here and I will catch you in episode 45. See you next time. Bye. But wait, there's more. Come back. I forgot an acquiring. <laughs> super short, but I want to show you. My mom got me, I don't know if you can tell, it's a fox. It's a super cute jar. I think I was probably more supposed to put like oatmeal or something in it because I do put a lot of my like dry goods in jars, but I put all of my rainbow yarns, all my rainbow yarn scraps from various rainbow projects and whatnot in there. And I'm going to have a rainbow scrap fox and I just wanted you to know about it. So now go enjoy your 2022.